these two are married, and you better hope that T dies first, because if Veronica dies first, T's never gonna know what to do with himself. <laughs> and it's a, that's a nice thing, though. No? He's got a nice wife. <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> Awesome wife. Yay, awesome wife. Yay. 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 Hello, the old man. <laughs> I love you, Veronica. <laughs> hey, how are you? Good. Good. That's Woo. great. <clears throat> That's great. <laughs> My name's Levi. Hi, Levi. So the way that this, the way that this starts off, is with um, some yelling by you. Oh, oh. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so I, you have to yell and you have to say, "Step out the front door, friends." Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't say that. Uh, then I'm just going to make you do it over and over and over and over and over and over again until it's good enough. So you might as well just yell it at the very beginning and get it over with. It's not going to be too scary because everyone else is going to be yelling too. Yeah. So I'm going to count to three and you're going to yell, step out the front door, Fred. Hey, hold on. I wasn't, that wasn't me being rude. I'm sorry if that was rude at all. That wasn't rude, was it? Yeah, that's not rude. Uh, one, two, three, we're going to say step out the front door, friends. Wow. Loudly. One, two, three. Step out the front door, friends! Awesome, my cheese! Yawn out! I'm going to do whatever it is I please. Just outside of this thickening window is a world full of opportunity for me and you. And you and me. But I fell into that same flawed fantasy that detached myself from daddy's bedtime stories and mommy singing me to sleep was gonna be the key that's gonna set me free. But look, you want out so badly right now, baby girl, but just you wait and see how much you miss your mom and dad once you finally get the chance to leave. I want to go home to my own bed tonight to sleep and cuddle with my puppy. And I'll miss my puppy. I want to make believe that she is a girl sleeping next to me. Like I used to when I was lonely. Like I was lucky enough to have somebody there next to me to keep me company when I woke up in the morning and hold me. But now I'm, well, I'm buried in the arms of someone else and missing mothers. And I miss the weathered hands of my dad while holding tightly to my lovers. And we call this free. But now I'm 18. I am a 22, baby. You want to see my ID? I'm going to buy all of my own cigarettes. In fact, Two packs, please. Yeah, look, two packs for those two years that I already ran myself broke. And two more for the two more. I'm going to count on these to cope. I'll take two packs for those two days that I'm planning on being away. I'm going to smoke them both the first so that on the second I can give my lungs a break. <laughs> Man, that's always the plan anyway, but my god, wait. Wait, is that a two-for-one deal on those 27s? You know what? On second thought, I better get two more just in case on that second day when I wake, I decide to smoke all eight. But a Jack and Coke would go so nicely right now as I have been drinking a little bit to try to forget about the fact that I have been drinking a little bit. To try to forget about the fact that I have been drinking a little bit. <laughs> I'm trying to forget about the fact that I drank a lot, man. I actually forgot about the fact that I am down. It's funny how perspectives change so quickly when you're the one with your head beneath that toilet seat, wearing that crown on your feet, and as I lift up my head from that bathroom sink, I sink into the mirror and scream, You don't know me! And Paul said it perfectly! I am the worst of these! But every now and then, I swear to God, I think I got that guy beat. And I used to be such a fan of abstract poetry, but that quiet, clouded, kind of confusing painting went from this diluted grayscale to a vibrant honesty pretty quickly and in fact I'm a little sickly and in fact I'm a little scared sometimes that this is all gonna be in vain. With a million little me's just 
running around, you know? All of eternity, it's no wonder my hope has such a bad name. I know no matter how large a hypocrite or how small my faith, when you started to talk about perfection, the way you talked about my pain, you became the seed inside that gave room to change. And I pray every day that there is power in prayer. And I hope with all my heart that my heart's going to find you there. And if you're really bigger than my skepticism, then how dare I compare that high? I prescribe with that beauty that you prepare. But I am a skeleton in a little fragile skin, and my God is only as big as I let him be. And I am not going to limit my God with my disbelief. My God has always, always been there for me, and I am not going to limit my God with uncertainty. I don't have much. Yeah, man. Yeah, but it, it might amount to a mustard seed. I beg for miracles, and then I breathe, I scream for signs and wonders, and then my heart keeps its beat. You gotta go through that fire to be refined. There's this huge sense of helplessness in a hopeless time. Well, I'll be yours, and you are mine, and we are one in kind. So, so sang the birds and the bees. When I was not strong enough to sing anything, if you care and provide for the least of these, then how much more will you look over me? I don't have much, but it might amount to a mustard seed. And I've seen you move mountains and command the winds and waves of the seas on a whim so much smaller than me. Sing in, God! He is bigger than all the air I breathe. The world will leave. And God is going to save the day. And all will sing. You're my glorious. You're my glorious. But I love all that rainy weather. Fills up my hollow bones just right. And I love all your rainy weather. The dripping sings me to sleep when I can't sleep at night. And I love all your rainy weather. It fills up my hollow bones just right. And I love all your rainy weather. And I wish that I could cry the way I see God cry. Christ! The last time I saw you cry was Tuesday. Last week, and I wasn't sure why, but the skies just kind of opened up. And I sat there beneath it in this puddle of mud next to the memory of my favorite swing set as a kid and wondered if it was my fault that you were sad that day. And I wonder what I did. Jesus, the last time I saw you cry was in a dream that I had late last night. And I held you tight against my bosom and you wept until I was drenched. And I said, I'm sorry, God. I'll never do that again. The other day, I met this girl. She talked about love like she actually believed it was real. <laughs> this child and I, we shared brief conversation about a few things we thought we could feel. Oh, I do not mean to shatter your naivety, darling, but you have so much yet to see. Little girl, and she shook her head and smiled like I was the one that was the child. She said, Mister, open up your eyes, and I'm going to show you the world. I said, people talk a whole lot about having a vice. Well, I've got three. That's insecurity, depression, and this growing anxiety. She said, look, I don't mean to like, cut you off at the seams or one-up you or anything, but I drink so much soda pop as a child that I'm addicted to caffeine. Hehe. <laughs> 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 I mean, look. Mister, you know that's not what I mean. I mean, at least you maintained your honesty. A little girl, you don't even know what I mean, but the blind were born blind so that one day they could see. And unless you become as a child, unless you become like me, you're making excuses for yourself, kid. You're holding on to reasons to stay angry! So what did I used to write about in sixth grade? And I sat against that fence and watched the world slip away. I me and my imaginary girl sat beneath that weeping willow tree. 
And watched God's tear drops drip from the branches reaching out to me till we were anything but lonely. And I love that rainy weather. It reminds me of being younger, back when I didn't worry. But I worry more than ever now! And I can't stop pacing these hallways! Oh no, my biggest secret, my biggest secret is that I don't have any secrets left. <laughs> I just wanted one to hold on to so that I could still seem sexy and mysterious to you. <laughs> I want to be excited about concerts again. I want to beg and scrape for those nickels and dimes and tell my parents that I'm going to be fine. Like, Mom, I am not going to jump in the pit. When everyone knows I'm going to jump in the pit. And no, Mom, there is nothing violent about the chariot. <laughs> Next to the memory of my favorite swing set as a kid is a ghost of me, looking up at me, wondering what he did. And as he lets the sand filter through his hands, it clumps him as a puddle of tears he's sitting in. And we whisper in unison, God, I must have bummed you out. I love this rainy weather. It reminds me of so many beautiful memories. And just like you said to me, the times that I cry are the times that I feel the most. So if I find another secret to hide, you won't ever know. I want to feel like I can't maintain control. And if I let it all out, I'm going to have to bear my soul. All I want is a hand to hold on to. And even the devil knows that's a lie. All I wanted was for you to heal my dad's back. Why was that so hard for you to do? I hate this rainy weather. It reminds me of being a kid when I would trust without question. And aren't there so many questions? Why are there so many questions? Get out of my head. When she finds those magazines underneath her husband's wife's bed, she'll stand naked in front of the mirror for hours like but what did you expect? Bang dumb blondes, sexy singles, and busty burnettes. I must not be as beautiful as that advertising says. Oh, excuse me, miss. I am. I saw your poster recently. I read your ad in one of Playboy's latest magazines. Actually, it fed. I've fed pretty much every need that I believe photography could feed me. If you can believe me, I hate it. You're worth more than my brief moment of orgasm when I allow my mind to deceive me. And look, look, I'd like to be an open book. It's hard for me to admit how I took advantage of the desires God gave me. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I feel hopeless, trapped in brokenness like I lost before I ever started racing. I know as well as anybody, this is a difficult topic to be facing, a difficult confession for me to be making, but I'm stating that when God started, the molding, shaping, and creating. You, 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 you. <laughs> We're not designed to be the objects that men look at while masturbating. Baby, never forget that you were made for relating. I'm sick of failing and learning exactly what it is I'm saying. I apologize. It was never my intent to ruin lives, compromise, or feed these eyes something other than what was designed. Sometimes, though, I feed that indecency. You just gotta slide that magazine across the counter. I do it quietly. I'm gonna shine my face away so the cashier can't see that it's me. Is that going to be all for you today, sir? Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'd like to pay to become the opposite of what I want to be. I should have waited, dedicated to see the experience God had planned for me in the beginning. I'm not patient enough to not give in to every sin forbidden to the hearts of men. <laughs> I'm just not patient enough to not give in. There I go again, you know, I just apologized um, five, 
five minutes ago. That was after repenting for last night, this morning. God, come on. What's going on? I'm sick of this. Somebody put some clothes on. You're better than this. God's most beautiful creation. And I'm sitting here euphoric like I had the right to destroy it just because I don't have enough dedication to build a relationship with the one that can free me. So I resort to suffocation of my very foundations while claiming that I'm striving to meet the expectations of purity. Jesus, keep reassuring me. I'm yearning to be that enemy that you desire me to be. Jesus, if you could keep reassuring her, the one in the centerfold, the picture I'll remember until I grow old, she is human. You are a human. You are bought and sold to a million empty souls feeling so hopeless that they'll do anything to fill that hole. And I apologize, please. Please believe it's true. I never meant to hurt you. <laughs> As for me, when I was um, when I was six, six, six years old, <laughs> I saw my first Goosebumps episode on Nickelodeon. <laughs> that stupid freaking TV show made me so scared of werewolves. I was afraid to walk into the dark for months on end. <laughs> I guess not a whole lot has changed since then, except for now. These monsters are personified within, and I, uh, I go to sleep with them. And I cuddle with them, and I dream about them, and I pretend that I'm seven, seven, Seven years old, once that fear has finally gone away, until I saw my father's ghost inside my childhood home's window panes, and some silent, shadowed matter followed me around the halls of my house when I was eight, so I held on to belief for something dark lurking around my family to this day. I used up all 999 lives, so by the tenth time I die, I'm going to be right by your side, and we will both agree that we tried to land on our... <laughs> Did I? I don't even believe in demons. I know, man, I know. Me neither. Nobody does. Nobody, uh, nobody really believes in demons until you've seen them. But, <clears throat> but, wait, I don't smoke that ganja. <laughs> and I'm not gonna smoke that ganja because, one, I don't believe it's what I need. Two, uh, I got married in April. For real? Hooray! Woo! Yeah, yeah. And my wife would freaking kill me. <laughs> three! Three! All my friends, all of my friends already smoked enough of that weed for two or three of my lifetimes. And I fell apart while I watched them fall apart. So I figure I got enough falling apart in my system already. I'm scared for my family. I'm scared the werewolves are going to keep attacking my dad. They already bit him up pretty bad and the swelling spread into my mom's side of the bed. I've been thinking way too hard lately about getting some meds to help clear up this depression that's clouding my head. But those tiny little red and white and black and blue and green and yellow and orange pills scare me half to death. When I was little, my mom, she hung this elephant on my wall. This is a pig. <laughs> <laughs> I had to pray to God that it wouldn't eat me in my sleep. I'm getting a little older now and still learning what I think about those depressive tendencies. But I know with all my heart that the same God that kept me alive then is the same one that holds my hand when I'm weak. And he gives me hugs when I weep. And I don't want smoke to be the reason for my rock and roll. And I don't want substance to be the reason my body bleeds. Prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. But if you'd hold on to me, I promise I'll do my best to keep on trying to believe. So come thou fount of every blessing into my heart to sing your praise, streams of mercy, never, ever, 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 ever ceasing call for songs of 
loudest praise. So teach me some melodious sonnet. Sung by flaming tongues above. And praise the mount I have fixed upon. Mount of your redeeming love. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it. The mount of God's redeeming love. So when I go to meet a God, I'm gonna have to be honest. And I'll tell you the truth. Not a day has gone by that I didn't doubt you. said, don't grow up too fast. You're just a boy. But it's better to be in the house of sorrow than the house of joy. And if I could have a heart like David that reflects yours, then what are the odds Solomon's sadness might not have creeped in somewhere and even the storm? Dear Dad, do you remember when I was always sad? You and Mom called it my depressed year. And I know it was pretty bad. What drives a child to want to give up everything that he has? What makes a person think that? What makes a mother's son decide that death is better than tomorrow? Inside of each and every breath that I borrowed, I held on to the sorrow and thought, man, well, I'm, I'm uh, never going to be able to repay Jesus with the way that I live. And now I'm thinking so much that I screwed this all up and I don't even know if you exist. So forget it! I may as well not exist! I never told you both that I almost killed myself. I did. I almost drove my car right off that highway bridge. And as I picked up pace, prayed to God that he'd forgive me if I went through with it. This, this is not a life worth living. I already ruined it. Mom, Dad, Sister, my friends, my family, if you never see me again, I hope you live out your lives happily. Give my dog a kiss on the lips. And all of my writings go to my best friend Isaac. Man, look, the ones about me and you are not meant to be kept in private. Make them your own and write your songs and inspire the world the way I wish that I did. Sister, you're beautiful. Don't let them take that away. Don't let yourself become just another face with no name. Get to know Isaac better. You two can collaborate. Besides, your voice is like way, way better than his has ever been anyway. <laughs> Mom, I'm sorry that the last time we talked, we fought. I'm just so sick and tired of pretending to be somebody that I'm not. And years down the line, when I am all but forgot, you were my last thought. And as I finish that note before I get up to go, Dad, look, I'm sorry I kept all of this pain inside. This is going to hurt you more than anyone else. When I breathe my last, I'm going to pray that you can forget your past and all of this and try not to blame yourself. I tried. I tried to find a reason to stay alive! I love you all so very, very, very much. But goodbye. God, I am coming to meet you now! I suppose this decision doesn't display 
much trust. But if you're real and you're really out there, then make me feel like I'm talking to something more than just a ceiling. I want, I want to talk to something more than just a ceiling. Dear Mom, I'm getting better at writing happier things. I know you'll never understand it, but I'm attached to the sadness, and it rings true when I sing, and there's a little bit of healing inside all of our suffering, and I have a savior that took out my suffering for me, and as I drove down I-40 to collide with 25, I swear to God, something beautiful came alive in me inside, and this memory is enough to make me risk one more night on Christmas morning. Like on Christmas morning, I don't want my little sister to wake up without her brother by her side. So tear me to pieces, my sweet suicide. For to die is gain, but to live is Christ. And I'm going to make you the apple of my eye. When I come to meet you, God, I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm going to tell you the truth. And not a lot of time has gone by that I didn't doubt you. When I come to meet you, God, I am gonna come complete, as you have completed me. I'll beg you to come whole. I'll beg you to come happy. There's green grass that grows out of this dead dirt we call ground. And in the times that we're wandering, we're all lost and found people, and life pours itself out from lost and found hands and from lost and found hearts and from lost and found beautiful, created works of art. I believe in a maker that makes people out of clay, makes creators out of clay, makes makers out of clay. And I think that he molds them all into a million different shapes, molds that clay into change. I believe in a breather that breathes life into nothing, a breather that breathes breath into a life that's worth something. And this is worth something. You are worth Something. This is not all meaningless, and we may, all of us, be dust in the wind, but the dust spins in the breath of a speaker who knows where the particles lie, and in a word, reassembles them again. Thank you guys very much. I am Levi the Poet.